Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, you should definitely hit subscribe before you go any further so you don't forget to do it later on. If this is not your first time on the channel, well, you should already know that this is absolute fucking garbage tier content and you kind of got something wrong with you for coming back for more. You're just like a rat in a trash can. But either way, thank you very much for joining me here. I do really appreciate you coming along to watch this video. Today we are looking at a Chaos Thunder Lightsworn deck I have made. It is intended to be budget friendly. It's also intended to just be for fucking fun. Uh, it's nothing too serious. Something that goes absolutely off when it goes off. An absolute ton of just absolute explosive fucking nonsense. The idea here is just gaining as much advantage as you can off of all of the Chaos cards. And of course, the Thunder Dragons just keep giving you those pluses and pluses. So you can just keep comboing off. You lose hearts to Nibiru and basically every hand trap in the game. But we're not here for anything too serious now, are we? As a quick note before we go on, if you are looking to pick up any of the cards in this video, or in fact any other cards for that matter, there is a link in the description to the channel sponsors Jam Jam Cards UK. You'll get yourself a nice discount by using their eBay store link in the description. If you're interested in signed cards or any of that kind of absolute fucking rubbish, you can reach out to them and ask for that and we can make that happen for you. Either way, that's enough waffling on from me. Let's get stuck right into this absolute fucking garbage video. Okay, so as mentioned, this is intended to just be a little bit of explosive chaos fun. Lights won't be in my favourite deck. I've really enjoyed playing Thunder Dragon in the past, and who doesn't love the chaos card? So we're getting stuck in to a pretty much budget-friendly deck profile. It's one or two cards that's slightly more expensive, but the vast majority of this is very budget-friendly. And the cards that aren't budget-friendly are probably kind of uh, excess to requirements, shall we say. And of course, so the fact is that nobody's really playing the physical game at the moment because of all of our current restrictions. And with that in mind, that is the reason that you're getting uh, a profile on here rather than a physical one because going to the channel sponsors to go pick up the cards that I need for videos a little bit more difficult and a little bit of a non-necessary journey shall we say so we're doing our part by staying at home and recording new absolute fucking trash content but again enough waffling from me let's get stuck into the profile so we start off with Chaos Dragon Levy in there pretty much self-explanatory it can special summon stuff it can rip cards out the hand it can pop cards in the field absolutely fantastic card it's also level 8 so it can make rank 8 which is something to keep in mind as well. We then have a single copy of Chaos Valkyria. This just helps keep recycling that engine round, being able to banish things, send stuff to the grave, get shuffled back into the deck off your Chaos base, all that kind of good stuff. Just a really, really good card. This is one of the best prints that we've seen in a while for something for any Chaos variant deck. We then move on to Chaos Creator. Again, another card that just keeps stuff looping around. That is really what you intend to do with this deck. Just keep generating resources after resources and just building up into your link play, setting up impossible to break boards or difficult ones to deal with at the very least. And with that mind, you could play something like Borrowed Savage, which again, is just going to help you make those unbreakable boards. It's just something to consider for your extra deck. But again, we'll get into that in a moment. Uh, we've got Chaos Betrayer here. This is a really, really good card. Uh, I believe Jesse Cotton played it a little while ago in one of his Chaos lists that he made. Um, this is a really cool card. When I saw this come out and I saw it printed in the packs, I thought it was absolutely fantastic. Uh, as a potential card anyway. Of course, with stuff like Malicious being level 6. Being able to overlay them, for example, into Beatrice as an idea. Or, of course, the fact that you can combine it with likes of Plague Spreader to make easy level 8 synchros. Of course, it also gives you the ability to do a little bit of graveyard control. So that is something to keep in mind as well. We then move on to the currently or recently reprinted Chaos Emperor Dragon of Armageddon. Um, so this is the one that was a prize card. And of course, it's far more budget friendly now than it was before. It's still a relatively expensive card. So this is something you could omit from your list. But it is still a very, very strong option. Something to keep in mind as a possibility of playing. In keeping with the Chaos Dragon theme, we've got the Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon here. Recently got an errata, but still incredibly powerful. Still really good to play in this deck. Uh, yeah, just a fantastic card for generating resources. We have Wyver Burster and Collapse Serpent. Uh, you already know what these do. They're getting rid of lights and darks. You can recycle them a bit easier now with Chaos Space and things like that, so you can continue to get the most out of them. Of course, it's not quite as good as not having them uh, a three ofs, but you know, one ofs are absolutely fine. They still got the engine going. Uh, and if anything, you're not likely to open multiples which can be a bit bricky at times. So, yeah, really, really important to this kind of deck, I think, and absolutely a must-include set of cards. 
We have a single copy of Armageddon Knight. You could chuck Greffer into here as well if you wanted to. Uh, I wanted to try and keep it as close to the 40 mark as possible. Although we're milling cards, we want to be able to regenerate resources. But also we want to see cards that are really important rather than just seeing sort of an amalgamation of random combo pieces. That is something you could go towards though, going towards the 60 mark, building up on combo pieces and just going with tons of extenders and going from there. Plague Spreader Zombie, of course, fortunately, it is in a cheaper printing. The original prints are extremely expensive at the moment. But again, you can get nice reprinted versions for very, very cheap. It enables all kinds of synchro plays. Again, you can play Halka Fibrax in here. I chose to omit it in order to try and keep this a little bit more budget friendly, but certainly an option you could look to use in. It's also really, really easy to keep recycling again, much like all the other cards in this deck. And then we're moving on to our Thunder Dragon package. We've got Dragon Duo, we've got triple copies of Raw, two copies of Hawk, and triple copies of Dark. I considered actually cutting this down a little bit further, but these are these are just really, really free. Especially stuff like a Law of Darkness, I've never felt anything like it. We just get to a Law, banish a Dragon Dark, and get your plays going, as well as drawing into cards. Absolutely insane. Uh, so we've got a relatively big engine of these. Again, you can cut them down in favour of other stuff if you wanted to, but they're also super cheap. Uh, and, you know, you can make Titan, but if nothing else, you just keep generating Chaos resources, because ultimately that is your end goal. We're playing triple copies of Raiden, of course. We play Rota further on in the deck as a means of searching it. Uh, it, it can easier make you your Synchro level 8s, which is the Chaos Dragon, primarily in the one that we're using. It allows you to mill cards. Uh, it's, it's just, it does lots of very good things. Also being level 4, of course, you can make Minerva uh, and all of that kind of good stuff. He's also a light, of course. He's searchable with Charged Light Brigade. Definitely the best Light Swarm monster pretty much in the game as it stands. Uh, so yeah, absolutely a must play of at 3 in my opinion. And then we move on to Wolf again. Just being able to mill this is so incredibly free. It's easy to send from the deck with all of the options that we have here. If you see it in your hand, it's not the end of the world. It's an easy easy way to get rid of it. Easy way to shuffle it back. It's not as much of a brick as it once was. Of course, you can put it back on the top with Plague Spreader and mill it off later on for more free resources if that's something you're looking to do. And then we played just the two copies of Lumina. Again, I think in terms of normal summons, I wanted to keep this relatively low down. Of Raiden is probably our best normal summon along with Armageddon Knight. Uh, and I did want to go for the extra Lumina. It is nice to have, but of course it's searchable. Um, but it's a level three, so there's a little bit less synergy there than we might have otherwise. But a two of, I think it's really good being able to just flood the field and go from there. And continuing with our Light Sworn engine, triple copies of Charge and Light Brigade. Absolutely nuts, especially in the kind of deck that wants to just dump everything into the graveyard this is just a really good option to have in there and a three of in my opinion is mandatory you could play one copy of raiden and i would still recommend three copies of this card and because we are running a slightly bigger light swarm package than we would normally run we are running solar recharge again being able to draw cards and mill cards is really nice this is something that again you could omit from your own lists i just really like this card i think it's a really good position uh, to hold something like this in the deck we're running double copies of Thunder Dragon Fusion. This could quite easily just be a one-off or even cut it all together if you don't really care about running Titan. I thought that Titan was a nice option to have in here. Just as a kind of backup plan, another way to just get big bodies on board and clear cards from the field. The fact that you can banish stuff off Titan as well is really, really important in this kind of Chaos deck. So something that you could consider uh, that you should really be playing, but again, something you could chop if you really wanted to make space for some other cards. Again, reinforcement of the army, we run plenty of really good starter cards that are warriors, so this makes absolute sense. One copy of Gold Sark because banishing one of your Thunder Dragons is just absolutely free as fuck. A copy of Foolish Burial because it's kind of like Gold Sark, but it dumps to the grave. Way stronger, of course. Uh, but yeah, Foolish Burial, really, really strong card, especially in this kind of deck. A must play, in my opinion. Triple copies of Allure of Darkness. There are so many decks now where I want to play Allure, but it doesn't feel like it's uh, it's as insane as it is with Thunder Dragons. With Thunder Dragons, it's absolutely fucking wild. In my opinion, mandatory in any Thunder Dragon deck. The amount of pluses you're gaining off this and the way it just starts all your engines up, really, really important in my opinion. And then we round off with triple copies of Chaos Space. It's a searcher. It regenerates your resources. It does all kinds of good stuff. Absolutely insane fucking card and really, really important to this deck's overall strategy. And that rounds us off at 44 cards. Again, you can push it way higher, run way more extenders, be way more explosive. I wanted to go with a little bit more consistency, especially in a deck that kind of is just randomly milling stuff and hoping for the best. I wanted to be able to see as many of the good cards in my opening hand as possible. 
And then we move on to the extra deck again. I'm running two copies of Titan. This could again quite easily be one if that's what you wanted to do. Uh, I felt like we had the space, but you could swap one of these out for, say, a Borrowload Savage, which again I've omitted from this list. Uh, I've got Trishula in here. This is one that I wanted to try out. It's worked out quite nicely in testing. I've uh, just been able to banish a bunch of Thunder Dragons to get it out and gain in all of those pluses. Just absolutely insane. Of course, if you happen to banish all dragons, that can work in your benefit as well. We've got Dingesu because we can make easy enough rank 8s. Again, you can run a danger package in here to further enhance this if that's something that you wanted to do. Dingesu just being able to get a free send, giving it protection, all that kind of good stuff. Just a really, really cool card. With this in mind, if you have access to it, you can also play something like Zeus uh, and create the space in here for that. Because again, it's a game-winning strategy and something that you could quite easily be making. Speaking of rank 8s, we have Sanafond in here. Again, for just shutting off the grave is just really fucking nice, quite frankly. The fact that it just goes massive as well in this kind of deck is, is really, really cool. So again, a really good rank 8 to run and something that you should definitely consider. And we're running a single copy of Minerva. Again, just a really cool card for just milling stuff. Able to get you draws. Able to pop cards on the field. What's not to like? And then we move on to our links for the deck. So we've got Cross Sheep because we do play some sort of fusions in here. Uh, but of course, there's other benefits to it as well. But fusion being the big one. We have a copy of Appaloosa in here as well. Again, being able to just set up a negate before your opponent can Nibiru you is really important in this kind of thing. Because your opponent probably is going to fucking Nibiru you if you're really not ready for it. We have Boral Sword here just as a game killer one to just finish off the game. You make enough resources in this that it's really easy to gain access to. So something that you should definitely look at using. It's also really budget friendly as well now because we've got plenty of prints of it that have come out. Uh, but again, you've got other options that you consider. But Boral Sword for me is really the big one to go for. We have Curious, an absolute must play in any one of these kind of decks. I'm absolutely baffled that this card hasn't been banned yet because it has been used in so many important crazy strategies. But I'm happy that it's still here because in my opinion, Lightsworn have suffered enough. We have IP Mascarena so that you can make it and then just pass turn if you're anything like me. If you're anything like a normal person, you find a way to set up Unicorn for the next turn as a Disrupt. Uh, again, you've got plenty of material so there's absolutely no reason to not take advantage of this Disruptive card. And Nightmare Unicorn, one of the best utility cards out there. Again, you could probably find space for Phoenix as well if you really wanted to. There are just so many different options so that you can try on the extra deck. Just build this according to your own taste. This is just how I decided to run it. And then lastly, we move on to our Synchro. So we start off with Michael, one of the really cool ones that comes with Light Sworn. Just a bit of spot removal, being able to shuffle cards back in order to get you uh, some, uh, gain some life points to regenerate resources. But also the fact that it mills cards as well. Just a really, really cool card to have access to. Coral Dragon is here because you can quite easily make it off something like Armageddon Knight and then Plague Spreader. And if you've got any way to get it into the grave, it's another draw and potentially more combo pieces to see down the line. You can also make it and then level it up, I guess you could say, with Plague Spreader into Chaos Rule of the Chaotic Magical Dragon or just Chaos Dragon, as I fucking call him. A really, really cool card. It's basically a painful choice in this deck. Uh, so what's not to love? The fact that he can res himself. The fact that he, he just does everything that you could possibly need in a Chaos deck. A really, really important part of the extra deck here. And again, if you wanted other level 8s, you could consider something like uh, Borrowed Savage as an example. Again, the intention here wasn't to go absolutely crazy competitive. We just wanted an explosive, very budget-friendly, lots of fun deck for you all to just fuck around with. And that just about rounds off our video. Thank you very much for making it this far. If you have, I guess you've enjoyed it enough to have hit subscribe, at least hopefully so. If you haven't enjoyed it, well... Fuck you. But in any case, hopefully you haven't taken this too seriously. Like I say, just a little bit of a fun deck profile for you guys to potentially mess around with. Or maybe you've got some good ideas about how to make this a competitive build. I guess it's a possibility with all this explosive combo potential. Thank you very much either way for coming along. Hopefully you have enjoyed the video. If you haven't already, again, you should definitely hit subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.